Welcome back. I'm playing Warhammer 40,000 Armageddon, and we'll get started on our next DLC here. I'm going to go back and do Glory of McCraig next, I think. Um, I'm trying to remember which ones I had used the unit modifier on, and I'm going to just go back and beat it on the hard difficulty this time. I did Vulcan's Wrath on Challenging, and that wasn't very difficult at all, um, so we'll see how the very hard, or not the very hard, the hard difficulty is. So take charge upon the of the glorious Ultramarines through the second war for Armageddon campaign and 11 new missions, including a special new feature where eliminating certain enemies can change the flow of of subsequent missions and we will be playing this one on a hard uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar with the difficulty settings how it works is easy you get 200 percent uh, requisition and 200 percent the normal experience and the ai units will have minus 50 units uh to their squad so i don't know why you would play on easy i guess if you just wanted to see the story but that should be so ridiculously easy that uh i don't see how you could possibly lose if that's the case. Normal, you just get 100% requisition, which would be the baseline baseline experience, and then there's no change to the AI units. Challenging, which is what I did on Vulcans, is 80% requisition, so it decreases by 20%. You still get 100% of the experience, uh, but the AI units start to get plus 10 models per squad. Now hard, which is the one that we're going to be doing here, is 70% requisition, so it goes down by an additional seven or 10%, but you still get 100% experience, so the baseline experience, and now the model count should go up by 20 models per squad compared to the very hard difficulty where it goes 70% uh, requisition, 100% experience, which is the same, but then the model count goes up by 50. So what that effectively does is make sure that you have to use units that have lots of attacks to just be able to cut through all the um, weak units and then rush to just getting objectives and things like that, and you can't farm the level for experience. Uh, it's very frustrating, though, because they'll just plop themselves down in buildings, and then you just can't get to them, and they can just keep... Uh, resupplying their units and getting them back up to full health and then uh, even units that normally wouldn't be able to damage you with uh, low armor piercing attacks because they have so many models in their squad they can actually do damage so if you saw my Vulcan's Wrath you know those storm boys which are starting to get larger groups even though normally throughout the whole campaign there storm boys wouldn't be able to do any damage once they started to get more models in there they were pretty consistently doing one or two HP damage per melee attack so you have to be somewhat cognizant of that so let's see what we can do here for the blueberries and see if we can have a good experience experience on hard. I am going to have the Fog of War uh, enabled, because what happens on the Fog of War is if you deactivate it, yes, you can see everything on the map, but the AI also sees everything too, so if you have any weak units that are within attack range, they'll just swarm you and attack. Um, and that can be real crazy, and you can cause a lot of losses that would unnecessarily, which would be unnecessary on the normal situation. So I do recommend that you have the Fog of War activated, and I always recommend that you have the Undo feature uh, activated as well, because it's really easy to misclick in this game. What it effectively does is as long as you move the unit and you don't have them unselect and you don't see anybody or get them next to a unit, anything like that, that would actually change the game, you can click undo and it'll move them back. Now, what can be frustrating is you'll be clicking not realizing you accidentally misclick something. You'll click somewhere else on the map and if your unit moved and you don't no longer have it selected, then the undo button is no longer available. So you just have to be careful when you're uh, playing this game that you don't cause those issues here. So let's get started. Welcome to Armageddon, Captain. As the spearhead of Ultramar's forces, I have followed Codex Astartes doctrine and established contact with our brother chapters in this theater. I will keep you informed of your objectives and share intelligence with you as it becomes available during these briefings. Lord Dante the Blood Angels, as an honored chapter master and the most experienced leader by far, has assumed command of the entire Adeptus Astartes operation. We are proud to serve under such an esteemed commander, but our Ultramarines detachment retains a considerable amount of autonomy. Yet, as Gilliman has taught us, we do not act for personal glory, but for victory. In coordination with all Space Marine brethren, our unified objective is the liberation of Armageddon, and the first task is to secure our drop zone just outside Hive Archeron. We must ensure our brothers can land without Xenos interference, should any Green Skids be caught within our drop zone or attacking Hive fortifications and purge with extreme prejudice. May Gilliman watch over your forces, let his tenants guide you as they guide us all. Hold at least four victory. Uh, hold at least four victory hexes, Captain. I may request your squad is. May I request my squad is positioned at your vanguard of this operation. We are eager for bolters for our bolters to speak in anger against the orc filth. Okay. So. Got. Calm yourself, brother. Remember, Gilliman taught us we do not act for personal glory, but for victory. So I guess these are what space marines over here. We've got our forces over here. And then we've got some Imperial Guard up this way. So, hmm, interesting. Command squads, Devastator squad, Tactical Marine. So I think we're pretty much going to want to have them have some overlapping fire here. And we're going to have to be pushing with these guys. Uh, what do we have? So we start out with the Command Squad. That's nice because I was running into issues before 
where I wasn't able to do what I needed to uh, with morale issues. So the Stern Guards just have a combi bolter. Nothing too interesting here. I think we're probably just going to go with the Dreadnought Army again. I don't see much else that's particularly interesting here. These guys don't have as much armor as the other guys that we had been playing with had. So, we just had to hold four victory hexes. I probably want to do the Devastators just to allow my guys to have some fire. And I'm actually starting out with Hellfire Dreadnoughts this time. So I think we're just going to kind of be deploying these guys all around. And we'll disband you. And you. And you. And you. Just keep getting our dreadnoughts out. Well, now the thing is, is if I'm going to have the Hellfire Dreadnoughts to start out with, maybe I don't actually need these Predators either. I do need Command Squads, so I don't want to get rid of them. Terminators only have 65 armor, which means these guys are probably going to do damage to them. So I guess we're going to dump these guys as well. I would definitely like to have more Scouts. Yeah, these even only have 60 armor too, so let's just get rid of these. And let's just get the scout snipers out. What I should have done, perhaps, is to just move them around. I don't think anybody has experience yet, so I don't think that messed me up at all. Question is, is do we want these devastators here? Or do I just convert them into something else? I feel like we should drop them too. Keep that going. Got these guys back here. Okay, so I can't just pull them all back or I'm going to end up losing. Because I have to hold the victory hexes. Okay, I can see what's happening. And I think <clears throat> on this very first mission it actually has bonus objectives where I have to keep the uh, Blood Angels alive. I don't know if I'm necessarily going to do that because I seem to remember it actually being a pretty difficult objective to complete because of the AI. You have to, the big thing is you have to keep your guys alive, uh, the Imperial Guard. And therefore, you'd have to reload and make sure they get bad rolls in order to hold the line here. So we'll kind of have those guys here. Uh, what you'd want to do is bring all these guys around. So that way, the mortar continues to get support fire. And you have to try to keep these guys alive as much as you can here. And then the same thing you'd do down here is you just kind of keep these guys here and use the Devastators to get a bunch of uh, support fire. And hope that they don't uh, get good rolls there. I feel like I would have had to reload that one because the mortar team just took 10 damage. I would need that mortar team to stay alive to be able to do support fire for everything else that's doing damage here. Otherwise, he just kills my vehicle, kills these guys, and there's nothing I can really do. Even with the resupplying them, see that it was took out a bunch of models there as well. Yeah, so I would have just had to keep having to reload this over and over again to make sure I had good rolls. And I think that's a bad setup, bad game design. Blood Angels request our aid, Captain. As you can see there, like, the uh, Salt Marines barely suffered any damage there, so that would have been, like, a roll I would have kept. And then I would have just attacked with these other guys. And then refitted the Salt Marines had I been 
doing this regularly. Now I'm a little worried about these burna boys that are coming down here around the back. Because for some reason they got aggroed onto my space marines. Instead of going after the guard. I think that's just because I had such bad rolls they died so quickly that the burner boys didn't stay up there. And none of these Imperial Guard guys are going to be carried through to the next mission. So there's really no advantage to feeding them experience. And while I went with Hellfire Dreadnoughts, I actually think it would probably make more sense to go with regular Dreadnoughts instead, so I could have those melee attacks to help clear out the buildings and the trenches and be able to lock guys down in a way to help prevent them from reinforcing. So it's like, we'll do something like that, but I think we're still just going to get taken out. But the big thing is you'd normally want to just keep advancing as fast as possible, because you'd want to be saving <clears throat> those space marines. The blood angels, I mean. Because it's definitely a march against time. And if you are going to do that, I think it makes sense to have a couple of devastators. because they uh, will get support fire when they get attacked and they also do get a pretty good amount of shots. But as you can see here, these guys are just gonna run in here and kill everybody. And then they're gonna go after my full of space marines down there. but we've aggroed everybody, so if you wouldn't want to move down like what I did here, you'd in fact want to just hold that strategic point and stay there. As you can imagine, it's even more of a nightmare on the very hard difficulty when there's plus 50 units for the AI there. down here all blocked up with these guys you just have guys a few guys on the trenches holding the line everybody else would just be bolting over trying to get to those space marines uh blood angels i keep i mean they're space marines but i think it could be confusing since technically everything is a space marine other than these imperial guardmen and then you wouldn't want to attack like that to get the counter attack you would just try to shoot from range it's kind of how you would set that up. And you'd also not waste attacks like this to wipe out these squads. You'd wait for them to attack you and the Devastator will get to go first with his support fire. And so you'd be restoring morale or restoring uh, lost troops is what you'd be doing if you were trying to complete this objective. And unfortunately that means you're going to be chewing through a lot of your requisition. really you'd only need a couple of dreadnoughts there and everybody else should be moving as fast as possible. Our brothers have fallen by Colgars. 
Uh, it doesn't really matter. It's just a, they all died, you failed your bonus objective. If you want to restart, you can go ahead and try. Otherwise, it's just the end. But the big thing is you, you would just be trying to aggro as much as you can onto your own forces. Instead of the Blood Angels. But when you use the uh, regular Dreadnoughts and you lock them into melee, when you have somebody engaged into a melee battle, it it uh, reduces the amount of units they can restore every turn. And normally you'd be kind of up here, and then you'd have your scouts over here. Now normally you'd snipe out the scout vehicles, but you actually want them to get seen because you want guys to be pulling after your scouts instead of uh, the blood angels there. So those are kind of the tips I would have for you if you were going to try to do this objective. And now it's catastrophic that uh, the war boss is here because he can see our guys. So that's really messing us up. But yeah, it would have just been a lot of reloading their turns, making sure they get bad rolls, making sure you get good rolls, and the essential thing is just making sure those Imperial Guardsmen stay alive. So you have to replenish not only the Blood Angels, but also the Guardsmen. So it's a very costly first mission. Uh, but what you do is, in the future, what happens is that you get to a mission, I don't remember which one it is, but you get ton, you get like four or five Blood Angels squads that will join you. Uh, so you, it's like a Dreadnought, a uh, Sanguinary Guard, and some Tactical Marines, and maybe some Assault Marines, I can't remember exactly what everything was. Uh, but the thing that's nice about that is, one, if you're suffering a lot of casualties, well then you've all of a sudden got warriors that you can start doing damage with, and alternatively, if you've got uh, pretty much everybody that you need, then, and you're maxed out on your troop capacity, then that's how you can actually get above the amount of troops that it, the game actually wants you to have, so you'd actually have above the threshold. And then, you can either convert them to a different kind of unit. Now it has to stay within the Blood Angels, so you're not, well I guess you can't really convert it to a different unit, but because uh, it has to stay as a Blood Angel and you don't have access to the full Blood Angel uh, roster, but you can disband them and get the requisition, so that's like a huge requisition uh, bonus as you can imagine, as long as they haven't suffered casualties. And a couple of them you may want to use, like the Dreadnought for the Blood Angels is generally pretty good because they have a little improved flamers. The Sanguinary Guard are actually very decent damage dealers. They're a little more heavily armored than kind of a standard assault marine. But they're also very expensive and they're not so armored that it's you can just arbitrarily throw them into combat like you can with some of the other units. I don't think you get Terminators at all. But, I mean, you can see even on... The hard difficulty here. This is still would be a very challenging mission to try to get that objective done, and I think it'd be very frustrating for a newer player that's unfamiliar with this game to be like having to reload the very first mission over and over again in order to get good rolls and save those blood angels. Because there's definitely wide variations in the difficulty of the bonus missions <clears throat> and this is that is one of the hardest ones to do just because it's so dependent on trying not to aggro guys onto those blood angels getting making sure you get good rolls on both the imperial guard and the blood angels and then blowing through all of your early requisition trying to restore any guys that are dying from the imperial guard because you just need to keep them alive so guys don't start flooding onto your Blood Angels partners there, and you just have to run in here as fast as possible, not really caring about the losses you take. Well, that's not true. If you take a lot of losses, then you can't save them anyways, but 
you definitely have to take a lot of losses. So by the end of this mission, you're at like a net negative in terms of the units that you have and their requisition. So you would not be doing the stuff that I'm doing here. This is just because I don't care, so I'm trying to farm them for experience, but you would never do this if you're trying to do that objective. And you'd try to aggro things with your scouts too. Generally, you want to have your guys positioned in a way so the AI does not stay in these trenches. Because with all those models and then giving them the defensive bonuses, it gets to be very challenging to get those kills. Now, we don't care so much about the Gretchen, but harder tier or deadlier units, like if those armored knobs were in there or something like that, that would be a big pain in the ass to try to get them out of there. Because they already take reduced damage in the trench, and then you end up throwing on defensive bonuses and everything, too. It's just a big nightmare. Now, one thing I would recommend is using that command squad that's up there to kind of follow your troops. That way you can use that leadership to keep buffing your own guys but as you can see here with these increased units even those storm boys are able to do damage to my dreadnoughts here so I don't want to necessarily direct attack them but it's like you can see my poor morale here and we do have to push through this because we need to capture at least four victory points So the biggest thing is <clears throat> just making sure you have a good amount of the regular dreadnoughts so you have enough to just engage guys to hold the front line and to stop them from replenishing their troop strength so easily. Having those devastators here would have been very beneficial to just hold the line while these guys are attacking the dreadnoughts, given how aggro they are. So I could have had a bunch of extra attacks on them. Now on this one, even though it says hold at least four objectives, you actually have to hold five of them, because if you capture four, you'll still fail the mission. So just FYI, so I, I had to redo this mission because I did I captured four like it said, but then you still fail, so you need to actually have five points captured at the end. trying to form a wall with my dreadnoughts here to protect my infantry and I gotta clear out these Gretchen ideally
Yeah, like those guys would not have moved, so there's no reason for me to have wasted all those turns there. Killing those guys. Because I needed those guys up here to attack these guys that are doing all this damage to me. And again, you'd want to be positioned so those guys are not in the trench, because now not only are my guys going to get attacked when we have to take that point out, but they're getting defensive bonuses and everything. Just see how combat and effective my guys are right now with their poor morale. It's just embarrassing. Better positioning of the command squad, and then you'd have to use them more as a melee unit too, as well, to just finish these guys off. Because again, it's all about being real aggressive on this first mission here. Then that command squad could have been over here helping buff our guys. Could also use the Ogrens and some other guys, but I typically kind of left them there just to hold the line in case any of the orcs didn't get aggroed we're trying to attack that point at the very end there.
And I think if you do those things, you should be able to get those Blood Angels successfully saved on your <clears throat> on your game. So hopefully that helps you. As you can see, it also stopped him from having those death dreads start to attack me. But that was finally the last of the units there. So he had Squigeth back there with his artillery, the death dreads, and everybody else. So it's quite the force that you have to contend with. All right, that was weird. So I had to reload it because uh, I only had, I had four spots and said I failed it, even though I had one, two, three, four up here, and then I had to, you actually have to hold five in order for it to get the victory. Now there is a bonus objective if you keep the. Blood Angel's alive. I don't remember what it does, but obviously I didn't complete that here. If you want to see what the rewards are and things, take a look at my uh, very hard difficulty playthrough of this campaign and you can see it there. So you have to definitely reload and do a bunch of finagling to make sure you get good rolls and things and not something that I'm really looking on doing on this playthrough here. Captain, a job well done, but I crave to spill more Xenos blood while Lord Dante's Blood Angels purge Archeon. Archeron? I'm not sure how you say it. We have been set... We have been set the honorable task of spearheading an assault of besieged Hades Hive. Hades Hive. Currently, intelligence suggests that the brave defenders within the Hive, led by a commissar, Yark, a commissar named Yark, are on the verge of collapsing. The Emperor would never forgive such a travesty should the defenders fall. We will traverse the ash wastes at a rapid rate. The enemy must not slow us. Lead us to Hive Hades, Captain. Clear a pass so our brothers can follow in our stead. All right, capture all four victory hexes. All right, so I guess we're just gonna be pushing up the side here. And I think we gotta go with another command squad. I didn't see that we had any uh, new equipment, no. So another command squad, because that was part of the issue we were having. Advancing was, our guys were running out of morale. while we were trying to push. Do something like that. Now it seems like it wants me to come down this uh, east side here, but we'll push the main objective. So thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying these videos. If you are, please give my channel a like and subscribe because we post more content for you. Have a great day.